Hey everybody, it's Carrie Ann, your favorite local go-to realtor, and today we've got another educational topic, and we are with Keith from Eight Flags Home Loans, and he's going to tell us all about credit reports and why that is so important in today's market. So Keith, tell us. Carrie Ann, thank you very much for having me, and good morning everybody. Keith Strasberg here at Eight Flags Home Loans. And yes, credit history, mm -hmm. credit scores, very important. Uh, your credit report, in essence, is, is a chronological history of how you've performed on your credit. Right. So I did, one of the things I want, even before I get going and talk, start talking in details, I want to urge everybody to get a free copy of your credit report every year. You can get a free copy of that from each of the credit bureaus, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. Now, it won't have credit scores, but at that point, you don't really care about the credit scores. What you're looking for is what's on the report itself, mm -hmm. what is being reported. Um, a lot of times you'll see that all the credit uh, that you have may not be reporting on all credit bureaus, which sometimes can be good, sometimes yeah. can be bad. Yeah. So that's the, that's the important tip I want to start out with. But uh, again, when it comes to credit and credit scores, it is so important when, you're, when you are buying that home. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, right now, mortgage rates are in the high sixes, so, which right. may not be ideal for us, right, mm -hmm. Carrie? And, but, Absolutely. <laughs> but the, the, again, if you even want that, then you really need to get that. That's you know those those solid credit scores. Let and me when ask we talk you about, a question. You sure I'm can. Sorry. Yeah. So, can you tell us just a little bit about um, what the credit score and how maybe you're getting ready to and how it relates to the rate? Because I know there's like a break. If you're at this number, you can expect this or that. So, so you can tell us a little more about that. Definitely. Okay. So, the magic number for all of us really is 740. Okay. If you're in 740 range, you're going to be eligible for pretty much every program that, that any of us have. Banks, okay. credit unions, mortgage brokers. Right. Uh, that's the sweet spot. Uh, conventional loans are really the cheapest, best loans out there, period. Right. So you really have to have those 740 credit scores. Now, the way the conventional loans are set up is every 20 points it's below. So, for example, if you're 720, there is a pricing hit. It doesn't necessarily wow, mean you're going to okay. get a lower rate. It's just that that rate is going to cost you a little bit more. Right. Every interest rate that you see advertised, it has a cost behind it. Right. So if you keep going down, let's say 700 or even 680, mm -hmm. then you're looking at, at higher costs, which then can start translating into higher interest right. rates right. if you don't want to spend the money to get the lower rate. Right. Which is a buy down. It's exactly what it would be. Okay. It would be a buy down. So. So you can always buy down on any type of loan. Okay. Um, I would rather start buying down on if I wanted to on a conventional loan at a 740 as opposed to at 700. You're buying down just to kind of get right. what, what people right. that have excellent credit right. have. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So, you know, so the question people ask me a lot is like, you know, well, Carrie Ann, what what can I do to to make sure mm -hmm. that those scores are are where they need to be? Right. Because credit scores literally change um, every day. Really, every day they they <laughs> yes. do. Um, every uh, creditor that you have reports that information, mm -hmm. and they don't all report at the same time. Right. So sometimes they report at a certain time, your credit score will get recalculated. So you never really have a credit score, you have a score for that given day or that right. time that you, that you check right. it out. But again, people will ask me, well, Keith, how do, we, how do we really ensure that we've got that, that great credit score? Well, the first thing you do is what I mentioned earlier in the video. You see a free copy every year, you right. see that report. Because there's important. mistakes on there a lot of times. There'll be things on there that either shouldn't be there, things that should have dropped off, or something like that. And that can really affect your credit score. And if that happens and you dispute it, it can take a while for it to come off. So it's what you're saying is such solid advice to oh, make sure you're checking that out every year. Without a doubt. And, and I see that all the time, especially when folks are, are helping or like repairing their credit. Right. So, oh, okay, I paid off collection A, collection B. Yep. Well, that's great you paid it off. Um, I always recommend getting documentation from those creditors stating that it's a zero yes. balance. Yeah. Because guess what? Sometimes they don't report that to the credit bureau. They mm -hmm. just don't for whatever yeah. reason. I'm not saying right. it's on purpose. Right. It's just they don't. And just like you said, Karen. All of a sudden, we see that credit report, and we say, well, hey, wait a minute. I paid that collection off two years ago. Right. Well, guess what? It's still been reporting, right. and unfortunately, it's still been affecting your score mm -hmm. in a negative way. Right. So, so that, obviously, seeing the report, that's, that's the first thing you do. Yeah. The second thing is just, it's just the way you manage your credit. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things that I always recommend 
is, you know, you want to use credit. Don't be scared of credit. Don't say, oh gosh, I'm not going to have a credit card. I'm never going to buy a car or whatever. That's dangerous too, to have no credit. No credit is actually worse than <laughs> yes. bad credit because bad credit can be repaired with money and right. settling things out. Right. No credit. The credit bureau does not know how to grade you. Right. Think of back when you were in back in high school and your teachers gave you a grade. Yeah. In essence, you were being graded every time you see a credit report. Right. And, and so how you're performing on that credit is everything. So again, don't be afraid of it. But what I don't want you to do is go out and get 10 credit cards. That is probably the worst thing that you could possibly right. do. Um, one of the things that, that will real, really torpedo a credit score is if the credit bureau see a trend of maxing out credit cards. Right. So they see credit card one, they see it maxed out for an extended period of time. All of a sudden credit card two comes on to the report. Right. And now all of a sudden that balance has gone up high. Unfortunately, what happens is people start chasing it and they start getting more credit just to maintain their lifestyle and, right. and really not even paying off that right. debt. Right. Um, it's kind of the old toilet bowl thing to where eventually it's just kind of, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. You don't really, don't really get out of right. that. So, you know, I think the sweet spot, in my opinion, is two to three credit cards. Two to three I, credit cards. I understand cards. that. So you, let's say you have one that, that's just the basics. You know, I'd use my groceries, gasoline, right. that type of thing. Maybe you have a great, you know, uh, program where you get rewards or something. Yeah. I, I got no problem with that. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Um, but you want to use the credit to, A, show the credit bureaus that you're using credit, but you have to use it properly. Right. Got to be responsible. That's the key word, and, yeah. and as in life, you be responsible. I would try not to carry any more than 50% of your current credit limit. That was on, my next question. Yeah. What is the ratio that they're looking for before they start really hitting you for being above where they want you to be? So it's 50%. 50% is the magic number. So okay. once you hit over 50%, that's when the score starts to drop a little bit. Okay. Um, again, hey, if you have one month, that you've gone over 50%, but you're able to take care of the next month, right. not the end of the world. Right. You're going to get those points back. Again, remember, credit score isn't a permanent thing. It's right. always going to be changing. Fluid. Yes, fluid. based off, of how, again, how you're performing. Right. Um, so again, if, let's say you do the, the two credit card system, right? You, so you've got the one that, that you use a lot, and yeah, again, maybe it's got great points or whatever, right. fine, use it. If you've got to carry a balance every now and again, it's not the end of the world, yep. ideally you're not. And then hold that second credit card back for, for maybe emergency issues. Right. Um, you know, the, when the car breaks down, uh, you know, when the, uh, you know, when someone has to go to the doctor and maybe you're incurring some bills right. like that. Right. I, not to say you'd ever use that card. I would, I would periodically put something on it and pay it off, but uh, maybe just hold that one back for those type of emergencies. Because right. again, what, a lot of times what you see happen, if you just run with the one credit card, then all of a sudden you've got the emergency. Now you're maxed out. Then you're good. Then you're getting the second credit card. Right. Well, then the credit bureau sees that they're going to downgrade you until they see how you're managing that right. second card. Now, what happens if you have two or three cards, like you're suggesting, and you had a balance, and now you've paid them all off, and they've just been sitting idle for months and months and months? Is that good or bad? You know, that's a really good question, Carrie. Ann. I get that question a lot. Okay. And a lot of it is depends on what you're going to be doing. So, for an example, if you know you're going to be making a big purchase soon, you know, right. you know you're going to be buying a house, for example. I would leave them alone. Um, one of the things that the credit bureau looks at too is, of course, how you perform, but they right. look at how you perform with the available credit. So, right. perfect example. Let's say I have three credit cards with each have $10,000 credit limits. Okay. So, I have $30,000 to, to uh, eventually, really, to, to tap into. Right. So, let's say I'm doing a really good job with that. Let's say maybe I'm only carrying maybe a, a thousand or two on, on all three together. Right. And I'm paying them off, and, but I'm managing it. Right. really well. Well, your scores are going to reflect that. You're going to have 740 scores, right. right? So, well, if I were to decide, you know what, maybe I don't need those other two. I'll just go ahead and cancel them. Right. And now all of a sudden you're carrying a, let's say $5,000 balance on just the one $10,000 credit card. Right. Well, now your ratio has changed. Right. Instead of around, around 10, 15% because right. you had the three open. Right. You've got the one. So now okay. they look at it and say, well, okay, well now we're getting, we're over 50%. Okay. They start hitting your scores. I don't know that I've ever thought about it that way. So that's, Keith, that's really good information because I would have thought maybe the opposite. Um, so that's, I mean, that's really a good way to think about. So they're looking at the three credit cards as a whole, as far as how that 50% max or lower. And if you have one, that makes really good sense. That yeah. Good and, sense. And, and again, if you, if, again, if they're your three favorite credit cards, you love them, you keep them, <laughs> that's fine. You know, maybe again, maybe you're not paying an annual fee. Maybe you're getting great points, whatever. Right. Um, 
But yeah, it's all about, again, how you're, you're handling. Right. If, you, if you only have $1,000 of total credit, if, if you're only carrying a thousand or excuse me, a hundred dollar balance on right. that, yeah, credit bureau is going to give you credit for that. Right. Uh, with a higher score. Right. It's it's all it's all the percentages. It doesn't matter if it's a thousand dollar limit or a hundred thousand dollar limit. Okay. It's all on how you're managing that. Okay. So, let's say Carrie Ann is coming to Keith, and I say I've got a credit score of six fifty. What can you do for me? So that's a good question. Good news is you can get a mortgage at 650. Okay. Um, you're probably not going to get a conventional loan unless you have a 20% down. Okay. Uh, because the PMI w will really be high again. Right. If you remember on conventional loans, it gets more expensive. Well, right. if you put less than 20% down, the PMI on a conventional yeah, loan gets really be, expensive. It could be 150, 200 dollars or more. It can be a lot yeah. depending on that low score. Right. So most of us really anything under 700, unless they have a substantial down payment. Now we're looking at the government loans. Now we're okay. looking at your, uh, if you're a veteran, of course, we're going to look right. at VA. But we're going to look at FHA and USDA rule will be the two options there. Right. The good news is at 650, I can get a mortgage for you. Okay. Also, it depends on what is causing the 650. Okay. Um, if it's something like uh, just a couple of medical collections, again, right. no big deal. The only time you, you get in a little bit of trouble is if the 650 is based off a delinquent Student loan. Oh, that is the, the biggie. The dreaded student loan. <laughs> the dreaded student loan. The student loan is the only debt that if you're showing delinquent on, right. you cannot get a mortgage. Okay. So regardless of what you feel about that, good or bad, right. that's the rules. Right. So I recommend to anyone watching this video, make sure that those student loans are up to date. Make sure they're being paid on time. Um, and that's you, new. A lot of people who have been um, kind of not having to pay on those student loans, now we're suddenly having to pay. And even though there's some good programs to help you with that, that hasn't been on anybody's mind right. for years. So you're absolutely that, right. you need to make sure that's on your radar. Very much so. And the good news is those student loans have not affected your score. So when they were um, just sitting idle, right. that's good. You know, so, so really the credit bureaus have not been grading you one way or the other based right. off those. Well, guess. Now, now that payments are needed to be made, again, it's just like any other type of an installment account. With the installment accounts, it's pretty straightforward. You just pay what they tell you to. Right. And if, as long as you do that, you're, you're going to be great. Right. You're not going to get extra brownie points by paying more, unlike you would with a credit card. Right. You just, you stick with maintain. the terms. Right. Maintain. Yes. Stick maintain. with the terms. And then if you've got extra money, then and I always recommend taking those to the, the credit cards. Okay. Because then where you're going to get a little bit of movement on okay. the credit scores. So to make sure, Keith, that I understood that. So if you have um, student loan and it's five hundred dollars a month, if you paid six hundred, you don't get brownie points for that. But if you pay none, they're gonna get you. <laughs> That's exactly right. So and, and so when I say brownie points, obviously you pay in more, you're gonna get rid of the debt quicker. That right. of course that's a benefit. Right. But you're not gonna get a benefit from the credit okay. bureaus. So that's good to know. They're simply going to say, well, great, you pay the bill. Right. You're gonna get the normal, uh, you know, score what they would have normally right. given you. So it'd be better to take that extra one hundred and put it on one of the credit cards. That exactly. You're okay. Or imagine that if you don't have a credit card debt, then you just put it in the bank and save right. it. Right. Put it in your pocket. So. So, Carrie Ann, so next I want to talk about maybe even lower credit scores. Okay. So, and, and I see this all the time, unfortunately. So I, I have a, a young man who reached out to me who had a 560 credit score. Ooh. Yes. And a 560 credit score is a pretty low score. Right. So, when, when I pulled his credit, I, I looked at it, and it was pretty obvious from the get-go. He had some student loans, which were fine. He had a couple credit cards, which he was managing fairly well. Right. Unfortunately, a few years back, he got in a situation where he had an automobile accident, and we see this all the time. Oh, okay. Sometimes people will assume that because the car has been totaled, that that balance is being wiped out by right. the creditor. Right. Not always true, okay. and your insurance company and all that stuff. You really need to watch that. So okay. in his situation, there was a balance left of about $5,000. Okay. Well, it didn't get paid, so guess what? We use the term charge-off, Okay. so it got charged off. And that's one of the worst, right? We don't like charge-offs. Yeah. And when I say we, the credit bureaus, they right. do not. Because what you've done is you're telling the credit bureaus that you have not performed on a particular account. Right. And what the and what, and what a charge-off means is that that creditor has pretty much waved the white flag and said, okay. I give up. I don't think we can get that from, from this person. Right. So they are going to transition that to a collector. Right. So that $5,000 that was on this, this young man's uh, credit report, um, will eventually, it hadn't yet, but it will eventually transfer to a, a collector. Collector will probably pay 
10 cents to the dollar for that debt. Right. And then they then in turn will start putting that information on the credit report, which right. of course is going to lower. I've got a question. You go right ahead. <laughs> I've got a question. Just thinking about that. So it's been charged off. It's going now to a collector. And okay, now that it's in a collector's hands, and typically they'll offer you deals to get yes. it paid off. So if you do that, and now instead of 5000 you paid 500 what happens? So the good news is, if it's with the collector, and you can negotiate whatever that is, if it's right. $500, pat yourself on the back, because okay. you, you actually did a good job getting out of that. Okay. Um, what I've seen in the past is, again, these, these collectors are getting this for about $0.10 cents to the dollar. Yeah. So if you can offer... 50%. Yeah. They'll usually take that no problem. Right. Obviously, I wouldn't start there. Right. <laughs> I would start lower and, and just see because these collectors literally have thousands of these accounts. Right. And they want to get them off the books. Right. And they're still going to make money. Even if they if they take 20%, yeah. they're still making a nice, hefty chunk of change. Right. So um, it's funny if you ever see these advertisements about people that'll give you credit repair. Right. This is what their version of credit repair is. Right. What they do is they tell you to stop paying all your bills. Your your credit scores go yeah. to you know 400s. Right. Uh, everything gets charged off, and then they turn around and negotiate those with right. those collectors, collection yep. companies. That is not a good way to do it. Right. First of all, you don't need to pay them to do that. You could right. do that on your own. <laughs> yeah. But that's not what I would recommend. Right. I would always recommend trying to work something out with the original creditor. Which uh, the example I just gave you, that gentleman actually is doing. He's more comfortable doing it that way right. since they still have the account. Right. And he's actually set up a payment plan, which. Right is fine. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, the payment plan will take a little bit longer for his credit score because they're still going to report it charged off until he's completed the payment gotcha. program. Okay. Okay. But for him, it made more sense. And, and again, the rest of his credit was pretty solid. Right. So um, once, once we start showing some positive payments on that, we are going to get some points. Mm -hmm. We should be able to get him towards 600 pretty soon to where we can then get him into an FHA How loan. long does something like that take? So let's just use him as an example with his low score. On average, how long would it take, if he's doing everything right, for it to get back to a place where you could really do something yeah, with Yeah, that's it? a good question, Carrie Ann. So unfortunately, the credit bureaus don't work as fast as you and I do. Yeah. <laughs> so I've told him every bit of six months, okay. every bit of six months. Okay. And then during that six month span, to make sure that everything he's doing is managed properly. That means no high credit card debt, and obviously just, uh, it didn't really have, a, he had some student loans, but right. again, just pay those installment accounts right. uh, as they ask for. And if you'll do that, along with, uh, again, what he's already doing with that bad account, then everything should go up. Right. He also did have a medical collection on there, okay. which again, medical collections, mortgage lenders do not care about them. Right. But if your scores are low, it's really a good idea to go ahead and settle those out because yep. they always get sold to a medical collection company. Right. And this one was $200. He'll be able to settle it for $80 or whatever right. it is. Right. And it'll be a really quick fix. Right. Uh, again, uh, the lower the debt, the, the lower impact it has on your scores, either up or down. So it's, it's going to have a small effect, but it'll, it'll still have a positive effect okay. for doing that. Okay. So I, I believe in six months, this gentleman will be on track to where we can get him some financing. That's good. That's good for him. And always that you're able to help him, of course. So any other tips that you have about credit? You know, the only tip I would have, um, and I will share this, is it, obviously if you're by yourself and it's just you, then, you know, do what you can to, to create a budget for yourself and, yeah. and try to understand, you know, how you're managing your money. Not just, not just for credit cards or, right. or, or whatever, but just in general. In general, yeah. If you're, if you're with somebody... And, and, and then all of a sudden, there's you have two people that you're handling this right. for. Um, again, make sure whichever one of you is like really involved with or really wants to do it, uh, make sure that person is handling the debt. Right. Unfortunately, I run into a situation where young couples will, will, will um, have low credit scores. And one of the first questions I'll ask them is like, well, who's handling the money? Right. Well, he kind of does a little and I kind of do a little. Right. I don't recommend that. Right. I recommend one person just taking it, right. embracing it, really... Loving it hard. Uh, lo yes, yes, because it's, it's very important. It, you know, I look at credit reports and credit scores as the foundation of right. your of your credit right. and of your financial being, right? Yep. If you don't have solid credit, everything else gets more difficult. Right. Um, and you, that means everything, not just for a home loan, all across the board, car loans, everything you do is affected oh, very by that much credit so. report. You pay a higher interest rate on your credit cards. Right. A lot of people you, don't know that. You pay higher 
homeowners insurance premiums right. with lower credit. Right. Because believe it or not, the, the insurance agents pull what's called the insurance model right. when they pull your credit. Right. And it's different than a mortgage model right. or a consumer debt model, which credit card companies pull. Right. So it, it does affect uh, you know what you're going to pay for homeowners insurance. Right. So again, it's, think of it as your foundation. Right. And if you have a solid foundation, you're, you've got good habits, good spending habits, right. you're using credit, but using it properly, Wisely. Then, then your scores are going to be fine to right. then when you talk to me, I'm going to get you pre-approved. And then I'm going to hand that letter to you, Carrie Ann, right. and you're going to go out and you're going to find them a house. I'm going to get them a house. <laughs> well, this has been great. It's always so good to have you and talk. There's always information that I'm learning that I didn't know before, which is going to help me with my clients. But I know that you just do such a good job with your people and trying to keep them educated is the key to the whole process. Yes, ma'am. It sure is. And Carrie Ann, thank you again for having me. This is a beautiful day on Amelia it Island. Is. Thank it you is. for letting us come outside. <laughs> um, this is fantastic. And um, again, I look forward to, to our next meeting. Yeah, we're going to do it again, Keith. Thank you so much. Okay, everybody. This is Carrie Ann again. I was with Keith from Eight Flags Home Loans, and he is always giving us great tips. So look for us again, and we hope to see you guys soon. Take care. Bye. Bye.